This is a video on plant cloning vectors, one that primarily focuses on agrobacterium-based vectors. This is a natural pathogen that infects plants and causes cancer in plants. The name of the cancerous disease is crown gall disease, and it is a true oncogenic disease. You have very likely seen trees or plants with knots or swollen nodules as if the plant is infected. Those are called galls, resulting from this plant cancer. This was first scientifically described in 1907, and the properties of the pathogen were first used in cloning in early 1980s. I will discuss some of the cloning vector relevant properties, then transition into disarmed vectors, co-integrates, and binary vectors. The pathogen Agrobacterium tumefaciens contains a natural plasmid called TI plasmid. This stands for tumor-inducing plasmid. This plasmid is responsible for causing the cancer in plants. Depending on the pathogen strain, the plasmid can range from 150 to 250 kb in size. The large size means that it is a broad range plasmid. If you have followed my previous videos on vectors, unsurprisingly, in the TI plasmid you will find the origin with rep genes, partitioning genes, and transfer genes, and some general metabolism genes. In addition, there is a bunch of virulence related genes. The important part is the other side of the plasmid called tDNA. The tDNA has a right border repeat and a left border repeat. Even though both repeats are 25 bases long, they are not identical. The DNA in between the repeats has a bunch of genes that encodes for products like opines, auxins, and cytokinins. The start of one repeat to the end of the other repeat is the complete transfer DNA. From the entire TI plasmid, only this tDNA portion is transferred to the plant that results in cancer. The tDNA portion is only 20 to 30 kb in size, out of this entire 200 or so kb size TI plasmid. These rep and par genes ensure that the TI plasmid is a unit copy plasmid, just like the F plasmid in E. coli. It can conjugate bacteria to bacteria, as well bacteria to plant. The plant conjugation uses the virulence genes. However, plant conjugation only transfers the tDNA. Let's get into the crux of it. Here is Noodle, a happy little dicot. One unlucky day, Noodle got an ouchie. The site of the bruise produces acetosyringone, which is like a pheromone to the agrobacterium. This unintentional mating call by the plant is the first step to cancer. When agrobacterium is next to the plant cell, the virulence proteins initiate conjugation, where the tDNA is transferred. One of the virulence protein cuts the TI plasmid at the repeat regions. In some strain, a copy is made before the transfer. Some of the virulence proteins are involved in making the pilus, which forms a channel for the processed transfer DNA to be transferred to the plant cell nuclei. Once inside the plant cell nuclei, the tDNA integrates into the plant genome at a random spot. In this conjugation, Noodle has received tDNA from the agrobacterium and now it is part of the genome at the injury site. Since only the tDNA is transferred and not the entire TI plasmid, keep in mind that the TI plasmid is not a shuttle vector. The tDNA only propagates because of integration. This is sort of like the yeast integrating plasmid we saw in the earlier video. Understanding how plants like Noodle get infected led to the development of disarmed TI vectors. A normal TI plasmid contains oncogenes. This is considered armed. But if you take away the oncogenes from the plasmid, you have disarmed the plasmid. The removal of auxin and cytokinin means tumors cannot be formed even after the bacterial infection. Transfer of tDNA depends on the recognition of the border repeats. It does not depend on what is inside the tDNA. The transfer itself occurs through the virulence genes which are not part of the tumor propagation. So removing the auxin and cytokinin still keeps the TI plasmid functional. And you can add any DNA instead of auxin and cytokinin genes. This non-oncogenic TI plasmid is called a disarmed TI vector. Agrobacterium containing disarmed TI vector will infect and transfer the tDNA in the same way, which can carry our DNA of interest. But it does not result in any visible tumor. If normal TI plasmid were to be used as vectors, it would form a tumor. Opine genes are typically not removed from the tDNA. They make specific enzymes that can be used as screening marker which serves as a proxy for integration of the tDNA. The screening typically involves some enzymatic assays. With your choice of DNA, you can also add a selectable marker. 
For plants, you either use drugs like antibiotics or herbicides. There is a narrow range of antibiotics that work in plants, depending on their classification. Like yeast or eukaryotes in general, plants are naturally resistant to many antibiotics. There are also herbicide markers to be used, but a lot of times there is concern about the release of an accidental GMO into the nature. Okay, classic disarmed TI vectors are not used anymore because they are way too big in size and handling large vectors is very complicated. To deal with such complications, co-integrate vectors were developed. I will highlight two ways to use them. The most widely used method involves three differential bacterial strains. One that contains a helper plasmid, another an intermediate vector, and the third is the agrobacterium containing TI plasmid. Let's look at the feature of the helper plasmid. It has two origins. One is the Col E1 type ORI, and the other is ORI T. Col E1 type helps in plasmid replication, whereas ORI T, with the help of transfer genes, helps in the transfer of this plasmid through conjugation. So, helper plasmid is a mobile plasmid. The intermediate plasmid, or vector, is based on the PUC19 or PBR322 plasmid. It carries the hygromycin or the bacterial ampicillin marker. It has a homology region, which we will see in a moment. On top of this, it has two origins as well, one for replication and another for the transfer. And in this plasmid, you can insert any foreign DNA you would like. The intermediate vector is the final DNA that will eventually get integrated into the plant genome. You can simply tell that by the fact that it contains your desired DNA and a eukaryotic selection marker. This vector can replicate itself through the coli one plasmid origin. Given that the ORIT is meant for conjugative transfer of the plasmid in bacteria, the intermediate vector does not have any transfer genes, so it cannot actually initiate conjugation. The third is the disarmed TI plasmid, and we discussed this a few moments ago. This disarmed TI plasmid contains a short homology region, which is an identical sequence also present in the intermediate vector. You can also instead use the DNA from the PBR322 or PUC19, which should also be present in the intermediate vector. As long as it is sufficiently long, it'll work as a homology region. One small detail, if you haven't realized, both helper and intermediate vectors are grown in E. coli, and TI of course is grown in agrobacterium. So these three separate bacteria are grown independently to get dense populations of bacteria, and then you mix them all together in one single tube. The mixing starts an event called triparental mating. There are many possibilities happening at the same time, but the productive start occurs when the intermediate and helper strains find each other. If you recall conjugation terminology, the helper contains the transfer genes, so it is equivalent to a donor, and the intermediate strain is the recipient. The helper plasmid starts the conjugative transfer and leaves a copy of the helper plasmid in the bacteria containing the intermediate vector. This results in a new strain of bacteria that has both helper and the intermediate vectors. Note that the intermediate vector has an origin of conjugative transfer, but it does not contain the transfer genes. However, the helper plasmid has the transfer genes that are compatible with the ORET. Also, keep in mind that all these steps so far have occurred in E. coli bacteria. In this triparental mating, there's also the agrobacterium containing the TI plasmid. The helper vector has the tra genes to initiate the transfer process, and they can recognize the same ORET in the intermediate vector and move this plasmid to the agrobacterium. This results in an agrobacterium containing both intermediate vector and TI plasmid. Now both share an identical stretch of DNA called homology region. Through this homology region, the intermediate vector and the TI plasmid can recombine in the agrobacterium. As a result of this recombination, you combine the two plasmids into one single large plasmid where the homology regions direct the insertion of the entire intermediate vector into the disarmed TI plasmid in between border repeat. This recombined final plasmid is called a co-integrate vector. This co-integrate containing agrobacterium can be used to transfer the tDNA into plants. The tDNA contains the intermediate vector which has your foreign DNA inserted. Side note about this process of transfer. The helper plasmid can do a conjugative transfer of itself into the agrobacterium. 
but the helper plasmid cannot recombine with the disarmed TI plasmid, so it doesn't matter. Helper plasmid will eventually be lost because it cannot be maintained in the agrobacterium because it has the coal E1 origin type, which is incompatible with agrobacterium. The intermediate vector likewise will also be lost in this process, unless it integrates and then it can replicate through integration in the TI plasmid. So none of these three vectors are shuttle vectors. The second way uses two bacterial strain. The difference is that you have combined the intermediate vector and the helper plasmid in one single vector. This is still a non-shuttle vector that depends on a co-integrate formation. The concept of using them is the same. And now the exercise for you is to redraw the critical components of the combined vector in one single plasmid. And if you figure this one out, can you also redraw the biparental mating scheme? Based on this biparental mating and co-integrate formation, what kind of differences do you see when you compare it with the triparental case? Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you want detailed answers, I will post them on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Co-integrate vectors are nice, but there's a better way to do this through binary vectors. The issue with co-integrates is again the formation of this one large plasmid that relies on recombination, the frequency of which you cannot control. Other issues revolve around maintaining different bacterial strains, which gets tedious, and then relying on the transfer of the vectors into agrobacterium, which can be very inefficient. Actually, you do not need to recombine and make a large co-integrate. Therefore, you don't even need conjugation. Binary vectors rest on a simple idea, which is that the virulence genes can be on a different plasmid than the tDNA. In the co-integrate, the virulence genes and the tDNA are in the same vector. Here's a simple binary vector. Let's assume it is Puck19 based. It has the laxi with the MCS, and it is flanked by the left and right border regions. So this portion of vector can work like a tDNA. The remaining vector has a selection marker, coal E1 origin, and a second origin from a broad range plasmid called SA origin. The SA is compatible with agrobacterium and coli with E. coli. This is a shuttle vector since it can be maintained via independent replication in two different bacterial species. For ease of use, this is normally maintained in E. coli. You can use this binary vector and insert your choice of DNA in this vector. Then it can be directly inserted into the agrobacterium that contains a TI plasmid with virulence genes but the TI plasmid does not contain border regions, so it is missing the tDNA functionality. Virulence genes act in trans. tDNA and vir genes do not need to be on the same plasmid. From this TI plasmid, vir proteins are made that start the conjugative transfer of the tDNA from the binary vector into the plant cell. This transfer works like it would in a natural scenario. Binary vectors are typically size limited to around 30 kb. Since it is just a shuttle vector, people have also used back-based shuttles, meaning that it contains the SA origin of replication, to transfer really large DNA chunks into the plant cell. P1-based shuttles are also available for use. This video focused on how agrobacterium transfers DNA to plants. There are cases where agrobacterium has been shown to transfer DNA to yeasts and even into human cells. Also, just like the TI plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens, there is root-inducing plasmid found in agrobacterium rhizogenes. The concepts discussed in this video apply to the RI-based vectors as well. And this sums up our discussion on plant-specific cloning vectors. I hope this video was useful and I'll see you again in the next video.